Welcome back dear friends this is lit e city the youtube channel where you may find many exciting videos designed to help you in your preparation for ugc nat in english literature dear friends in our series key terms of cultural studies we discuss some critical and very important terms from the field of cultural studies in this video too i have brought some very very exciting and important terms uh, covering many important issues and i hope they will increase your knowledge they are, they will help you in your coming exams so here is our first term dear friends this is dominant residual and emergent basically these are three concepts these were developed by raymond williams in his essay dominant residual and emergent this is the name of the essay also it was first published in his book a very popular book marxism and literature so friend what does raymond williams mean by dominant or residual or emergent basically these are according to him three different modes three different states of a cultural uh, a cultural society or we can say cultural values the essay tries to highlight how dominant structure in a particular society maintain their dominance while at the same time other social groups or we can say minor social groups those that are not dominant they try to challenge or subvert those culture so this is a particular site of struggle where the dominant cultural values struggle to maintain their hegemony against other uh, or we can say contrasting cultural values now the dominant discourses are those obviously which majority follows at a particular historical moment and as such they are considered as the integral part of the culture and their values are held to be the true at that particular time when we say a particular historical moment this makes it clear that any type of dominant value is temporary it is not a permanent kind of we can say thing now the second residual by residual william does not mean that it is archaic or thing of element of past which has no more relevance in the society rather those cultural elements that nonetheless continue to be lived and practiced as in the, as an active part of the present they may be we can say uh, in contrast alternative or subordinate to the dominant value but they are not according to the present system of the values they are borrowed from the past now dear friends important thing is that archaic is has lost total value in the present system the residual may be oppositional to the dominant cultural value archaic Uh, has lost its significance but residual still is followed by uh, we can say a good portion of the society william basically raymond williams give example of monarchy and organized religion he says that monarchy is almost archaic it has lost its value as a cultural icon but organized religion can be taken as a residual of this dom once dominant uh, value monarchy monarchy is no more it is archaic while organized religion we see even in our so called scientific and age of reason organized religion still holds value for a great percentage of people the third variety the emergent it has genuinely new meanings and practices greatly distinct or oppositional to the hegemonic culture so we can say residual is from the past dominant is the present and emergent is the future emergent is a direct challenge to the dominant values for williams the primary source on of an emergent culture is likely to be a new social class for example we can understand 
earlier the dominant values were those that were uh, nourished that were supported by the aristocratic class but when uh, in the last phase of the 19th century and in the beginning of the 20th century the middle class became a power a new type of values a new type of value systems uh, basically came into being and it become earlier it was emergent and then it become dominant these three chart an emergent culture will require not only distinct kinds of immediate cultural practice which are completely different from the dominant but also new forms or adaptations of the form by adaptations of the forms means they may use forms of the dominant culture at present which that is dominant but they use it in a very different context or in an adapted form so you can see residual it is around for some time it may be revitalized in the form of retro or nostalgia it may appear again and again it is not on the surface but it is still not down it may any time come on the surface dominant it is heavily played codes it is uh, we can say lifestyle of the daily common man the norms and mood of the today while the emergent it is the new thinking and educational styles and emergent is that code which is going to be dominant in future you can see by this example even this is we can we should call it archaic but still as an artifact you can see it appearing in a retro or in a nostalgic mode radio in fact it has become archaic now very at uh, we can you can see, you can find this particular piece of uh, communication in a rarity while podcast or we can say such type of devices uh, where you can uh, digitally listen to audio these are at present actually dominant not emergent so dominant is belief and practices of the majority emergent is belief and practices that oppose dominant culture while residual is the belief and practices that were once part of a dominant culture and still remain powerful influence so these are the three terms by remen williams our second and very important uh, key term of cultural study is structure of feeling dear friends it was once again coined by as you can see raymond williams and the essay in which he first talked about he first coined the phrase is preface to film written in 1954 and the phrase tries to discuss between the dramatic conventions of the society and the written text that are largely influenced by these dramatic and social conventions of writing uh later raymond williams used the term in other essays also especially he has a long discussion on it in the long revolution and uh, he basically talked it in relation with gramsci's notion of hegemony dear friends william specifies several elements that comprise the social experience so basically it is a social experience a uh, social phenomena which he which he names a structure of feeling now it can be related with space with time how it affects it is one of the major part affective characteristics as well as particular relationship to power basically all these things that in a particular space in a particular time and how it affects he coined this term structure these all are the forming element of structure and they constitute how we feel how we basically perceive a particular text in other words structure of feeling inform us they it basically gives us uh, an idea about particular feelings of a society through the help of a narrative so narrative becomes a kind of a mirror narrative becomes a kind of book uh, where we can find the dominant or the hegemonic 
स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द सोसाइटी हाउ दे फील अबाउट पर्टिकुलर कोर्ट हाउ दे फील अबाउट पर्टिकुलर सिस्टम इट्स नॉट अबाउट डेटा ओनली इट्स अबाउट परसेप्शन विच कम्स थ्रू टैक्स दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट हाउ वी रिसीव द टैक्स एंड हाउ वी आर अफेक्टेड थ्रू सर्टेन एलिमेंट इन द टैक्स दैट इज totally dependent upon these key element spatial temporal and affective uh, characteristics this is why every literary age every particular period and movement has its own typical emotions affects thoughts experiences words and that are available in culture and subculture generation place at a particular moment in time and it is these things that basically dis, uh, uh, are very much uh, you know deciding factor in the appreciation of a particular uh, text it is because of this particular structure that we perceive a particular culture as different from others either in time or in space in very simple words structure is feel structure of feeling is the structure of society's response to a particular uh, text how the society feels in general because of particular time and particular space and particular uh, we can say code of uh, appreciation dear friends our next term is genotext and phenotext these are terms applied by julia kristeva the famous belgian critic with reference to her theory of semanalysis she borrowed these term from sam uh, somjan and soboleva these two are critics who first discuss the two varieties of a text genotext and phenotext now kristeva criticizes classical semiotics proposed by peers and sorcher because she finds that this particular semiotics doesn't uh, deal with play transgression multiple meaning from social code and that is why she proposes a new system and she calls this system semiology or semanalysis in which meaning is conceived not as a science system but as a signifying process when we call it a signifying process it means that meaning is free to uh, get a particular uh, the sign is free to get multiple meanings now semiology the uh, the system developed and proposed by julia kristeva is based on two concepts genotext and phenotext in a very simple terms genotext is the body of biophysiological process that are constrained by the social code the society how it basically controls the biophysiological process this is reflected in the text this genotext actually exists within the phenotext which is the signifying system so phenotext we can say is the higher level and genotext is the physical level in very simple words phenotext is the physical text that which is expressed that which is in the language or other signifies phenotext is what genotext allow us to write it is basically words written on the page it refers to text as an appearing in its concrete manifestation or material form whether it is a movie to so it is or the scene whether it is the text so what is on the page language as we experience in its appearance and sound it is the phenotext for example what is the word like what what basically it uh, uh, it means however genotext genotext is the genus it is the factor that influence the particular nature of the genotext genotext thus is uh, we can say unseen control of the society over the phenotext why is it so why a particular word uh, once is supposed to be a taboo word once supposed to be a vulgar word then it acquires social currency and becomes a part of normal uh, we can say uh, code of language it is 
it it resides in the genotex while the appearing of that particular word again and again in text becomes a part of phenotext and now we come to our a very important term which has been taken up by many critics again and again time and again in different contexts according to their particular uh, criteria of the word but uh, accretor what we are in, uh, in this particular video going to talk about is roland barth's concept of accretor accretor is basically a french word which uh, if we try to translate it it may sum up as writing in his first book writing degree zero roland barth examined the arbitrariness of the constructs of language he was basically uh, barth was talking about how to write neutral writing is almost impossible because all writing has some discourse that shapes our interpretation the writer may appear to be neutral to be we can say what he uses word like uh, transparent or white writing these are terms taken from different critics but Barth basically believes that no writing can be transparent or completely neutral but a creator has a specific relationship of form to content form and content it is embodied in the conventions of writing and operating within ethical and political values almost we can say uh, what he talks about a creator we have just seen in phenotext it is the ethical and political values that give, that decides the conventions of writing but distinguished accretor from a writer's personal style now personal style is a very different thing while accretor is socially affected style because of this accretor neutral writing or writing degree zero without any political inclination standing on the neutral ground is just a utopian ideal and it is unthinkable it is not possible because a writer not only has his or her own distinct style but the writer is very much influenced by the accretor in a later essay accrivant and accrivain writers and authors but later contrast accrivant which he calls authors who write about something with ulterior purpose and then he talks about accrivance for whom writing is self directed or writing about language itself what basically once again he tries to say the author performs a function he the the author has a higher place a deeper role to play while the writer is just performing an activity the writer his goal uh, who has a goal who has a purpose he uses language as a means the author on the other hand is aware of the ambiguities inherent in his or her language and is thus prepared for the multiple readings and meanings it is in this uh, particular uh, ma uh, meaning in this particular angle that bart basically differentiate between writers who are just writing for a purpose not writing degree zero and authors like kamu who try to basically create text uh, knowing very much aware that their writing is has contained multiple readings and meanings okay friends this is all in this video i hope it uh, it it proves to be very helpful for you in your preparation and you can find more exciting info rich and exam oriented videos at litricity keep supporting keep supporting